In the spring of 1985, John Thompson was convicted of attempted armed robbery. He was sentenced to 49 and a half years in prison, the maximum penalty. Next, he would be tried for the murder of Ray Liuza Jr. I've been here for near 50 years. What else can it do to me? A lot. John, they can sentence you to death. Listen, John, I'm sorry, but I have to strongly urge you not to take the stand in your murder trial. Why? Because that would allow the DA to question you directly about your armed robbery conviction, and we cannot allow that to happen. But I gotta be able to tell the jury that I didn't do it. And when they ask you about the attempted carjacking that was done using the same gun? I didn't do that either. Well, then you'll come across as a liar, John. It just burned me up. The disc attorney fixing it so I sit through my own murder trial without ever opening my mouth. But Mr. Coon kept telling me, we don't have time to cry about what they have done. We've got to figure out what we're going to do. Now... I want you to tell me a little bit about your friend Kojak's involvement. Kojak? See, what you gotta understand, Mr. Cool, is Kojak phone first me. We all from the same hood. We all knew each other. We're all trying to get by, you know? Make money. And that's how I ended up with that gun. Kojak traded me that gun for drugs. You too good to me, man. You too good. Friends of folk, man. All right, all right. Were there any witnesses to the gun exchange? No. No, not for the gun. What's up? You got some problem? I also traded Kojak some drugs for that gold ring. Ooh. That's, that's cold blooded, man. That's clean right there, baby. Ooh. A guy I know was there and saw it. But now, nah, he's claiming he don't remember a thing. Oh, you like that? Oh, that's cold blooded, man. That's I like cold. that. John Thompson sold Ray Lyuza's ring to J.R. Harris. Where'd you get that ring? Harris will testify to that in court. And Thompson wrote a letter trying to convince a witness, Big Red Daddy, to lie for him. Read this. Say you was on the street when you seen him give the ring to me and don't change your statement. If you see Funk anywhere, tell him if he come to court, we is gonna tell on each other. Sure, I sold a ring to J.R. But like I said, I got right. it from Kojak Freeman. Thompson was trying to get rid of the evidence and frame the others. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just the opposite. Funk Perkins and Kojak Freeman was trying to frame me. Kojak, who shot Ray Liuza? Nut did it. Kojak says you pulled the trigger. Why do you believe him? They already admitted he was there. I was there. I know about the robbery, but I wasn't no killer. Kojak trying to save himself. Kojak's a liar. Well, they've offered him a deal to testify. Do we have to offer him a deal? Listen, you want to convict the devil? You gotta go to hell to get the witness. I want you to tell me a little bit about your friend, Funk. <laughs> <laughs> Funk is in it for the money, plain and simple. I don't mind helping Mr. Laser catch them, you know, but I'd like him to help me and, and I'll help him. So that's his sole motive, the reward money. Funk thinks I was trying to set him up by giving him that gun. I got something for you to say. Oh, thanks, man. Yo, I just need to make some money tonight. I don't got no money, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, Funk needed some money for rent. So I gave him the gun I got from Kojak, and I told him, go sell it to JR. I'll get some cash, pay me back later. That kind of thing. Now, I didn't know that gun was used in a murder. I never would have touched a thing if I'd known. That's for damn sure. So, all right, so, so, so I wait right here. We, we, we're talking about go, 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 go. I wait right here, man. Looking back on it now, I'd be a whole lot better off if I never helped Funk Perkins with his rent money. I admit, I sell drugs and I buy hot merchandise. Funk sell drugs too. But I didn't rob nobody and I never killed anybody. We're gonna get a conviction, I'm sure of that. And when we do, this is how I want to handle the penalty phase. First, we'll bring back that young lady from the carjacking, uh, Mimi Lagarde, and remind folks how she and her brothers could have easily been murdered that night. Then I'll explain how the defendant's doing 49 and a half years for that crime already. 
And if they don't give him the death penalty, he's going to be sitting in that prison laughing at them. On May the 8th, 1985, John Thompson was convicted of the murder of Ray Liuza Jr. The jury then voted whether to sentence Thompson to life imprisonment or death. I understand the jury's deadlocked. Might I ask what the deadlock is? Don't tell me who. Tell me the number only. 11 to 1, Your Honor. 11 jurors voted to sentence me to death. One voted for life imprisonment. Would further deliberations help? Leona Cheney, the long holdout jury, wept openly while the judge repeatedly asked the jury whether further time deliberating would be useful. After what seemed a very long time, the jury foreman gave the judge an answer. Yes, Your Honor. With those simple words, for the first time, I feared I would not be around much longer for my two boys. After two and a half hours of deliberation, the jury deadlock was broken, and I was sentenced to die in an electric chair. I was transferred to Angola State Penitentiary, where, on death row, I would await my execution. What's them clothes? Oh, that guy won't be needing them. He was just executed. Gordon. Hey. Partners agreed we could take on a pro bono case. Great. The Loyola Capital Defense Project of Louisiana sent us a file on John Thompson. We're gonna have to move fast. Thompson's scheduled to be executed February 22nd. That gives us three months to save him. I mean, you should go and talk to Thompson. I'll find us a PI. You know, <laughs> I thought my days as an anti-death penalty activist were behind me. Louisiana is right up there with Texas in terms of number of executions. It's the right time and place to get back into it, chum. Be the lawyer from up north. Uh, Philadelphia. Um, John, I'm Michael Banks, and I'm here to try to help you. Let's uh, let's start with the carjacking. What can you tell me? I can't. I wasn't there. All right. Um, what can you tell me about the Ray Layuza murder? Nothing. I wasn't there either. Do you have any ideas about who might have committed the crimes? Anything that can help us? I don't know, man. Like I've been telling everybody for years, I wasn't there. All he kept saying was, I don't know. He was no help at all. Well, look at it this way. If he wasn't there, how's he supposed to know anything about the carjacking or the Ray Light Uzzah murder? Well, at least the private investigator's already on the case. Hey, 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 how you doing? Hey, Hi. how's that basketball coming along, huh? Hey, let me Show see that me hand. Let me see that, yeah, that boy hand getting big. The worst part of prison was being away from my two boys. Wow, look at that. Is there anybody else who has an alibi for John Thompson that night? I don't think so. I don't see anything here. <sighs> oh, it's time to go. Oh, Do we have to? Yeah, we have to go. John's execution is only 11 days away. These appeals have got to work. Thanks. I'll be right here. You can come here next time. I ain't going nowhere. You didn't have to come all the way out here. No problem. The judge postponed your son's execution. Oh, my God. It's real. Oh, 
I don't know how I can ever thank you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> John Thompson's stay of execution was good news. Now, Kojak said that he walked home with John Thompson looking for gas. But there was still lots of work to be done to get him off of death row. We didn't know how long it would take, but we did know we weren't giving up on John. Ten long years passed, and I still sat on death row. I thought those lawyers would finally get worn down, but they kept right on working for me. John? The judge, um, he ruled against us. Appeal after appeal was denied. I'm so sorry. We're gonna keep on fighting. But I never had a lawyer actually right. care about me before. It inspired me to educate myself. I would read my case files and offer them suggestions. And I worked hard to be the best father I could to my boys. Oh, I got a picture of him right here. Hold on. Yeah. I was amazed that John could have any relationship with his sons, let alone such a close one. Hey, Gordo. Yep. John's on the phone. Oh. He got in the habit of calling us, giving us updates on his boys, and we kept him informed about his case. <laughs> so my little baby is graduating from high school. Dad, I'm 18 now. I'm not your little baby anymore. I'm my youngest son. That makes you my baby. <laughs> Normally on death row, it's real loud. Radio's going, TV's playing, people laughing and talking. On the days when someone's executed, it gets real quiet. We're all praying that that person come back alive. I knew my day was coming, and that someday, they all be praying for me. I've just received another death warrant. The courts granted John stays of execution six more times. Then, in April 1999, we received yet another death warrant.